So I assume you're all looking at the board? Yes. So, all right. Let's hope it records that way. Um, so for for this Friday, well, I, I don't know. We'll see what happens this Friday. Um, I don't know. We'll see. So for right now, I'm planning on doing it this Friday, but we'll see what happens. There's a there's a chance I might have to um, put it online. If if they close the campus, I'm going to put it online because I don't want to keep delaying. It's got to end this class. So it'll be on um, animal tissues, which I did that video on. It'll be on the video from Monday. And then today, which is essentially um, the cardiovascular system, and I can't do the whole system, so I'll probably do the <coughs> the heart. So, um, and I'm going to keep it on humans. I'm not going to do um, fish cardiovascular or anything else. So, let's so start with a question: um, What's What's the purpose of the cardiovascular system? Um, there's a few purposes, but the main, the main purpose is to um, deliver oxygen to the cells and to get rid of carbon dioxide. So if you think back to the chapter on cellular respiration, where we had like the Krebs cycle and glycolysis, Krebs cycle, electron transport chain, you needed you needed oxygen to get rid of carbon dioxide. You had to get rid of carbon. So um, it's not the only purpose, but this is kind of like what I'm looking at here. So we have an exchange between lungs and tissues. By tissues, I mean all the cells, right? So we're, there's an exchange between the lung and the cells. The lungs are supplying, I already messed it up, oxygen, and the tissues are delivering carbon dioxide back to the lungs. So you're breathing in the oxygen, it's going into your blood, it's heading out to all your tissues, that's delivering the oxygen. And now you have a different set of blood vessels coming back, delivering all the um, waste product back to the lungs again so that you can breathe that out. The heart is the heart's kind of in the middle here. It's, it's the one doing, it's, it's pumping all of that. All right, so the heart is the pump that is doing all of this. In fact, the heart's kind of like a middleman. So the heart, to make this a little bit more accurate, We could say that the heart is getting the oxygenated blood, and then the heart is sending that oxygenated blood out to the tissues, or that the oxygen. And then the, when the tissues are finished, take it back, the heart's going to take it back, and then the heart will deliver that to the lungs. So it's really kind of like that. The heart's in the middle, mediating all of this. We actually have different types of blood cells, right? There's blood cells that are carrying, there's different types of blood cells and there's different types of blood. So there's blood in your body that has a good amount of oxygen in it. So we call that oxygenated. And then we have blood that doesn't have so much oxygen in it. 
we call that deoxygenated. Some books will say oxygen rich and oxygen poor blood. That's actually more an accurate term, but um, I just use oxygenated and deoxygenated. There is oxygen in your deoxygenated blood. It's just not a lot, right? And so if you kind of look at it, you see that the blood going this way to the tissues, that's oxygenated. And then the blood coming back, that's going through different blood vessels, and that's going to be deoxygenated blood. And it actually looks a little bit different. If you, um, if you cut open a vein, it's um, a little bit darker than the blood that's in an artery. You, you see them, they, they, they look different. Um, in the book, they use colors like blue and red. That's not absolutely true. I mean, I know when you look at the veins, it looks blue. Um, it's, it's not. It's not blue. So, but it is kind of a different color than the, than the um, blood in our arteries. I was worried that this thing's going to record backwards. I was really hoping that it that it's recording in the right in the right way. And I assume you guys are seeing it the right way. Do you know what? Yeah. Those people could have come to class. Are you seeing it regular or are you seeing it backwards? I'm seeing it regular. Yeah. It's regular. I, I think we're okay. I, it might record backwards. You know what? They people should have come to class. That's they can watch it backwards. I don't know. <clears throat> so two types of blood: oxygenated, deoxygenated, and they go in different types of blood vessels. Right, so we got to get the oxygenated blood to the cells, the tissues, and we got to get the deoxygenated blood back to the lungs. So. Let me erase this and let me go into the heart. Here's the heart. I'm going to draw it in black. And I'm not going to draw it looking like a heart, I'm just going to draw a box. There's our heart. And whenever you look at something, you have to use the anatomical position. So the anatomical position is like, it's like that, right? So I'm, it's me facing you. So, you know, this is the uh, left side and this is the right side. So right's over here and left is over here. So the first thing we're going to do is we can, we can bifurcate, we can bisect the heart. So this is the right side. Nope, I already messed it up. I had two choices, 50-50 shot, and I screwed it up. Left, right. So there's a right side to the heart, there's a left side to the heart. Um, there is a wall in between the two sides and they don't mix their blood, at least once you're born. Once you're born, there's no mixture between the two. So whatever goes into the right side leaves the right side. Whatever goes into the left side leaves the left side. And they're right and left because they have different, they deal with the two different types of blood. The left side deals only with oxygenated. And the right side by process of elimination. Deoxygenated. And so that's it. All the deoxygenated blood comes in the right side and it's going to go back out the right side. And we can actually figure out where, <clears throat> where it's coming from and where it's going at this point. But before I do that, let me divide it again. So we can divide the heart again that way. So that gives us our four chambers. It's a four chambered heart. I don't know why I had to do that, in case you can't count. One, two, three, four. Four chambers. <clears throat> um, so there's a receiving department and a shipping department. 
the receiving, the parts that receive are called the atria, or singular atrium. And then the parts that ship the blood out are called ventricles. So now when we look at it, we have a, we have a right atrium and a left atrium, right ventricle, left ventricle. So that's our four chambers. Both the atrium are going to receive blood, but they're receiving different blood. The right atrium and the left atrium both receive blood, but they receive, the right atrium is going to receive deoxygenated or oxygen poor blood, left side oxygenated. So we know that they're coming from different places because this is deoxygenated. It's coming from the tissues or the, or the cells. So that's deoxygenated blood coming back from all of your cells. I don't know if you can see that green color. Right, so then the atrium gets it. And the atrium is going to hand it off to the ventricle. So it receives it, and then it gives it to the shipping department, and now the right ventricle is going to ship it out. And so our issue here is that it's, it's, it's deoxygenated. We need to go get it oxygenated. So where do we send this blood to get oxygen? The lung. Yeah. We're going to send it out to the lungs. Then... Now it goes to the lungs, it gets all oxygenated, and now it's gotta come back to the heart again so that the heart can send it out to everywhere. So, from lungs. So it left, the blood left the right side and it returns from, to, the, to the left side. It departed the right side, it's gonna come back to the left side. <clears throat> and then, now it's oxygenated, so the atrium hands it off to the ventricle, and now the ventricle is going to send it out to all the tissues. So it's just like that. Tissues get it, they use up all the oxygen, they put in carbon dioxide, and now we're coming back again to the right side. So these are going to be like all the arteries going out to your whole body, and then this is the vein. So, like going out this side, that's going to be the artery in my arm. It's going to, from the heart, it's going to come up around my shoulder. And there's like a big artery coming around my shoulder, and then it's going down my arm, and it's feeding, it's feeding all of this with oxygen. That's the artery. And, and you can't see them because they're pretty deep. They're, they're more protected in our body. But the veins, you can kind of see them. The veins are more superficial. So the veins are all coming back with deoxygenated blood, and they're going back to the heart. So this would be like the arteries going down to the um, down my arm, and then this would be like the veins coming back. So it's like that. It's like that, you know, everywhere. And it's like systemic circulation. So so far, so far, okay. No questions. So that's, um, that's the four chambers, but there's also four valves. There's, there's valves after you, so there's four rooms, four chambers, and after you leave a chamber, you go through a valve, like a door. So every room has a door, like an exit door. So I'm going to put a valve in between here. I'm just going to put them like that. So there's valves. You know, once the blood leaves the atrium, it cannot go back into the atrium. Once that blood goes into the ventricle, it has to stay there. So the doors or the valves kind of work like, like this, like this door, which, okay, camera won't do it. 
It works like a door, like a one-way door. Right? Think about um, you know any door to a room, right? It just opens into the room. So this valve, these valves open into the ventricles, but they won't go back the other way. So they're just one way. <clears throat> so what happens, so you have two here, and we call these AV valves, AV, right? Atrial ventricular, but everyone calls them AV. So these are AV valves, both of these, but they have particular names. Let me clear up the board a little bit. So they have names. This valve right here, we call tricuspid. So that's called the tricuspid valve. And then this valve here, it's called bicuspid, or more commonly, the mitral valve. So if I were to talk about the two valves together, I would say your AV valves. That tells you it's those two valves between the atrium and the ventricles. But if I wanted to talk about one or the other, for example, out of both of these AV valves, it's more common that the mitral valve gets jacked up. The implications of having like a messed up or prolapsed, let's say it prolapses, but the implications of having a prolapsed mitral valve are, are a lot different than like the tricuspid valve. Because you think about the mitral valve, it's going where? I mean, not the, the, the ventricle here is going where? Everywhere, right? When the blood leaves this ventricle, it's gonna go all the way down to my feet and back. So this ventricle, this is all a muscle, right? So this muscle, this ventricle, has to pump the blood down to my feet now as I'm standing here, and it's got a power, it's got to pump that return trip up my leg all the way back up to the heart. This is going just to my lungs. It's got to get the blood from here to here and back, right next door. It's not a difficult trip compared to having to send blood all the way up to my brain and back, or sending blood all the way down to my feet and back. So the, the, the left side is working a lot harder, right? So therefore, the, it's more likely that, you know, you're gonna see problems with the mitral valve, or when the mitral valve goes out, it's more of an issue. But anyway, they're valves, they're, they're so when, when they're closed, when they're closed, they're gonna be, you know, they're going to be like that, right? And they won't go. You don't want them going into the atrium. But what if those valves, like, what if they don't quite meet in the middle and they just kind of come apart a little bit? Or what if what if they're going up a little bit like that, like they shouldn't? Or what if one's going up, right? And then blood's going to go back into the, into the atrium. Which would suck because you want blood leaving the heart. That's what it's all about. All right, so you've got two valves when you leave the atria. You also have two valves when you leave the ventricle. I'm just putting them down here. These aren't where these things are. When you look at the heart, it's kind of, uh, it's, it gets, it's confusing at first when you look at it because things are coming in one way and it's, it just, it's just confusing, right? And I, for now, I just want you to understand um, how it works, like what it does. So we got two valves when you leave the ventricle, because it's the same thing. When you leave the ventricle, you can't come back. That blood cannot come back. So we call these semilunar valves, because when you look at them, they look like part of a moon, so like semilunar. But they also have names. Um, the left side is going into a big vessel called the aorta. I'll just draw like a vessel here going out. I'll draw this one in green. 
So this is going into a vessel called the aorta. So we call this valve right there aortic. That's the aortic valve. This valve here is going into, well, it's going to the lungs. So, so pulmonary. This is a pulmonary trunk. But anyway, so we call this side pulmonary. pulmonary valve and that's just to ensure once the blood leaves once that blood goes into the aorta you don't want it going back you don't want to return it and it tries it tries to return every time your heart beats this blood tries to go backwards because this is you know this top, part, this top part of the heart is contracting, the atrium are contracting, and then the ventricles contract. So it's like atria, ventricles, relax. Atria, ventricles, relax. It's just like that. So when the atria contract, that pushes the blood into here. But as soon as the atria relax, the blood tries to go back, and it shuts those valves, shuts the doors. It would be like if I had the door to this classroom, like halfway open, right, and then um, someone threw a grenade in here, what would happen? All of us at the same time would head for that door. I'd make it out. But you guys wouldn't, because you'd all hit that door, you know, and it'd be like at a concert, right? And so you'd all rush the door, and then everybody's like behind you, and you force the door closed, because everybody tries to leave at once. That's kind of like what the valves are like. I would probably find like the weakest student and push that student on the grenade. That's probably how I would handle it. So I got a lot of stuff up here, but we have four um, chambers and we have four valves. So far, okay. Good. All right. Um, let me erase some of this stuff, make it a little bit less confusing. All right. In fact, I'm going to erase all my valves. Just all right. So we got back to four, back to the four um, chambers. All right. So there's got to be something going into it, and then there has to be something leaving. Well, leaving, we already we already have that. We well, I was sort of saying what they were. So this is the exit. This is the vessel that is leaving, exiting. We call this an aorta. So that's out. That's going to go, that aorta is going to become all your arteries. So that aorta is like, I shouldn't say all your arteries. It's not exactly true because, I mean, technically, and, and you should know this, I might even like test you on this. The difference between an artery and a vein is not the type of blood that's in it. It's the direction that it's going. So we always say A for away. Arteries are going away from the heart and veins are going toward the heart. So because there is exceptions, think about blood that's going away from the heart and it's going to the lungs. So it's on its way to the lungs, away from the heart. That's an artery. But in that case, it's, it's not carrying oxygenated blood. It's, it's the reverse. But anyway, so when I say arteries, I mean, I mean, for the most part, most of the time, the arteries are carrying oxygenated blood. Not all the time, but most of the time. So anyway, the aorta becomes all of the arteries that 
you know, your femoral artery in your legs and your carotid arteries in your neck. And um, so that's going and feeding oxygenated blood to your whole body. Now, on the way back, they're going to come through veins. And then all the veins in your body are going to converge into a vessel called the vena cava. So I'm going to just draw the vena cava coming in like here. There's two of them actually. There's a there's one above and there's one below. So there's like a superior and inferior vena cava. I'm just drawing one. I'm just trying to show you it's going in. So now we're coming back in. We left this side going to everywhere in the body. Now it's all coming back. It's coming back to the right side of the heart. And we call all the veins go into one of the two vena cava. Vena cava. There's one from above and there's one from below. So superior, inferior. So for example, like here's my heart, like here, and both my arms and both my necks, all four of those arteries are coming into one vena cava. So you would see like two veins coming in this way, and you have two coming in from the from the neck, right? And then inferior would be like, you couldn't see it, but it'd be coming in from underneath, and it would probably enter somewhere here. It's, it gets kind of like complicated. So vena cava, that's all the veins coming back in. Now, back out, this blood is, it's on the, it's on the right side, therefore it's deoxygenated. We gotta send this out to the lungs. So this vessel is called the pulmonary trunk. The pulmonary trunk is going to become pulmonary arteries, right? But this is this vessel here is going out to the lungs, and it's going to split. It's going to split and go to the left and to the right. Because the lungs are right, right next to the heart. Sends that deoxygenated blood to the lungs. Now the now we have to go back. And so there's going back. There are pulmonary veins. Um, Khan Academy has a Khan Academy has some pretty good videos on this. Um, you can look at blood flow through the heart. Khan Academy, it's 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 pretty good. I mean, it's better than this. And that dude's from um, Louisiana, also from this area, from the New Orleans area. So. Those are the blood vessels. Now let me give you another analogy. So I look at I look at blood vessels like streets, and I look at cells as like houses, right? So we have um, we have an artery, which is like an like an interstate, right? There's not a lot of interstates around here. Um, you know, there's just a handful, whatever, 310, I 10, 610, whatever. There's not a whole bunch of them, right? And traffic can move really fast, and at least it's supposed to, unless you're in like Metairie, um, they're all going to die. But normally, that blood moves fast. So um, you're going like, you know, 70 or 80, lots of lanes. Um, that's an artery, and and then you get off of that. So like when I came here, I went up um, I-10, and then I got off on um, 510 over by Jasmine, and then that. And when I got off 510, and I'm going like over the bridge and stuff, you know, I'm doing interstate speed, so I'm whatever, going 70 or something. I have an old car, I can't. And but but then. That eventually turned into Paris Road, right? And so I had to slow down. It was like two lanes each direction, and um, I could still go kind of fast, but I couldn't go too fast because eventually I'm going to hit some lights, 
you know, I can go 45, 50 on Paris Road or Judge Perez. That's called an arterial. So then they start getting smaller. So this one is an artery. Then we have like smaller arteries. Right, so there's, there's, many, there's many smaller streets. You know, there's lots of Judge Perez, Paris, St. Claude, whatever, St. Bernard Highway, right? So there's a, there's a bunch of those around, uh, but not so many. Uh, yeah, anyway. So then we go to the smallest street, the residential street. There is a bunch of those, right? Those are the capillaries. Sometimes these residential streets are so small when cars are parked on it, you can't get two cars to pass each other. Like, you know, you gotta pull over behind like a parked car and like let somebody go by. So sometimes they're really small. And that's what they're like in our body. Sometimes the, the capillaries are so small that only one blood vessel at a time can fit. And so in this analogy, the blood vessels are the, um, the cars. So there's my blood vessels. Right, you can fit like a whole bunch of cars here, but you can only fit like one car here. So that's like the blood cells. The passengers inside the, uh, the car, that's the oxygen. So you've got like oxygen inside the car. You're only gonna have four passengers. That's how many oxygens each hemoglobin molecule can carry. Like, it can carry four um, for each, whatever. So, oxygen is the passenger, the car is the uh, blood cell, the red blood cell, the capillary is the residential street. Now we have the cell, and the cells are the houses. So all the houses are like right next to each other. So it's like the car pulls up in front of the house, the oxygen gets out of the car and goes into the house. So now what we're left with is what do we call all this space, like the lawn and the driveway between the street and the house, what do we call all that space? That's called interstitial fluid. I'll just write it up here. So these are all terms you're going to see, by the way. Interstitial fluid, you're going to see it probably like in two weeks, right? So interstitial fluid is all the fluid around your cells. So, you know, in our analogy of streets, it's the backyard, the front yard, the grass, the driveway. It's all that stuff that's not the house and not the street. <laughs> And as long as there's more people in the car than there are in the house, people from the car are going to go into the house. That's, and what's that principle called? So as long as there's more in here than in here, they're going to go. Do you remember what it's called? Is that osmosis? Is it dealing with water? Or is that just passive diffusion? Yes, you said it. It's diffusion. It's diffusion. Oxygen moves by diffusion. So as long as there's more oxygen in the in the blood vessel, the capillary, than there are in the cells, the oxygen is going to move into the cells. And and carbon dioxide. By the way, at this point, carbon dioxide is doing the same thing. So oxygen is getting out of the car and going into the house. There's carbon dioxide. They've been in the house. They've been quarantined. They want to they wanna go out. So they're like itching. They're, right, they're, they're coming the other way. Oxygen and carbon dioxide are passing each other on the front lawn. And the carbon dioxide is getting back into that car. It's not exactly like that, but I mean. 
And eventually, this is a capillary, but eventually when we follow this street, it's going to become a, a vein. But that's different. But I was just trying to show you, you know, interstitial fluid cells, kind of the, the, the layout of it. And, and this is all governed by diffusion. Carbon dioxide is seeing that there's no carbon dioxide in the car, but there's four of them in the house, so they're they're gonna go get in the car. Until what? Four people are in the car, and then other carbon dioxides can't go in because they're like, no, go wait for the next one. It's already crowded. Carbon dioxide is like, no man, do you fit three in the back seat? No, fuck you, carbon dioxide. We're not squishing back here. No man, there's room. Alright, so um all right, I see I got a lot of stuff up here. So I'm gonna erase this. Actually, well, yeah, let me erase this. Let me start with that. All right, now we're back to the heart. Um, so let's talk about the blood flow through the heart, like where it goes. Like we'll make a list. Let's let's get to the questions, the test questions. You so this is a circulation, right? It's 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 constantly going in a circle. I could start really anywhere and then I can finish back in that spot. It doesn't matter where I start. I can start here and end up back here again, right? But normally, textbooks start at the right atrium, which is, that means we're going to start at the right atrium, too. And don't get the impression that Blood's only going through one side at a time. No, blood's going this way. Blood's also going this way. So it's, it's, it's going like this constantly. They're like two circles, right? So there's, a, there's two types of circulation going on in the body. One is called pulmonary. Pulmonary circulation is just from the heart. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be lazy here. From the heart to the lungs, and then back to the heart again. That's, that's pulmonary circulation. So that's pretty easy. Out to the pulmonary trunk, to the lungs, back to the pulmonary veins. That's it, that's pulmonary circulation. You left the heart and you went to the lungs and you went back to the heart again. The other one is going to your whole system. So we call that one systemic. So that's going from the heart to all of your cells, putting that word's tissues, and then back to the heart. So it's the other side, leaving the aorta, going into all the arteries, then it becomes veins. You know, we follow it down to the house level, get out and go to the house, the apartment, then all the veins become the vena cava. So it's leaving the heart, going into the whole body, and then coming back from the whole body, going to the heart again. So from the heart to the tissues to the heart, that's systemic circulation. Right now I'm just going to cover both. I'm just going to, we're going to follow a blood cell from the uh, right atrium and we're going to Keep following it until it gets back to the right atrium. Right. But this is all happening at, happening at the same time. All right, so right atrium. Then if you look up here, you have to go through a valve. So I erase the name of the valve, but what's that valve? It's okay, you don't have to unmute. I'll just, I'm going to end up saying all this. You just say it to yourself. Bicuspid valve. Then into the right atrium. I mean, wow, I already screwed that up. What should I have said? All right, ventricle. 
So right atrium, through the tricuspid valve, into the right ventricle, through another door. Every time you leave a room, you have to go through a door. We call this one the pulmonary valve. I guess I should be putting valves here. Um, you'll see some people will say pulmonary semilunar valve. Nobody does that in like real life. When you say pulmonary valve, we know what it is. Through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary trunk. I'm going to start abbreviating, abbreviating pulmonary. The pulmonary trunk is going to turn into arteries. And then we're going to be at the lungs. And we're exchanging carbon dioxide for oxygen here. So pulmonary trunk becomes usually a trunk. A trunk is something that's like before arteries. So whenever you see something that's like a trunk, it's going to become an artery. Back to the pulmonary veins. And if you just follow it through, the pulmonary veins are going to go into the left atrium. I'm going to run out of road here. I didn't think this through. I'm not a good planner. You ever see people do like their own restaurant signs? And they like fuck the last part of it up. Like the letters got smaller all of a sudden. I always wonder how. Because they're people like me. But that's a sign I would have treated that different. So you only get one shot at that. <laughs> um, left atrium, mitral valve. You want to call it bicuspid, that's fine. Nobody does it though. Mitral valve into the, you guys can see a little bit lower, left ventricle. All right. You can think about where it's going to go now. It's got to go through another valve, right? If it's in, it's in the ventricle. I'm going to continue up here. I know it's kind of messed up, but whatever. Left ventricle, outdoor valve, aortic valve, and then that's going, the name of the vessel that it goes into, aorta, same word. Now think of that street freeway analogy arteries and then the arteries are going to get smaller we have like the judge perez paris road there's a lot more of the arterials they're a lot smaller and then finally there's a ton of capillaries and this is now at the tissue or cell level And we're making a trade here. We're trading the oxygen for carbon dioxide. Oxygen's leaving and going to the tissues. Carbon dioxide's going back into the blood again. So now we're going to start the way on the way back. There's something called venules. I'm not going to put them. And then veins. So on the way back, it's veins. Where would veins be in our analogy? Um, service roads. Take I-10 through the east. I can get back to the east on service roads, right? So that would be my analogy. 
And then all the veins are going to all converge into the one of the two vena cave, vena cava. Then the vena cava is going to empty into the right atrium. So that's our circle. Um, if you knew that, if you could, and, and if you looked at a couple, like if you looked at some videos, they, they, they can kind of show you how it goes. And um, if you could imagine that in your head, I think you'd have a good understanding of the, um, of the cardiovascular system. And, and you, you would start it you would start knowing some things, right? For example, sometimes um, one side of your heart might fail versus another side. So there's like left-sided heart failure and right-sided heart failure. And um, so let's say like the right ventricle gets all jacked up, right? Now everything's gonna get backed up. So we find the right ventricle, wherever I put it, here's the right ventricle. That gets all jacked up. So now all the blood's backed up. It's backed up. It's backed up. It's backed up. It's backed up. Now it's backed up all the way to here. So I'm going to start getting, I'm going to think that I'll have a lot of water in this tissue because you can't, like the veins are all backed up. We started with the heart, but we followed it back and that led us to veins. And that leads us to whatever's outside of the veins. So usually, if something's going to get like uh, really swollen, it would be like the feet. It could be the hands, but the feet are going to be more likely, right? Let's just think about like the, the gravity part, right? So you'll see people with with heart failure on the right side, and they're going to have um, they call it like pedal edema, pedal edema, like edema in their in their feet. It'll be really swollen. It'll be like a pop mark, anyway, I pitted. Um, what about the other side, left? So left ventricle, let's follow that back. Left ventricle gets jacked up. Back, back, pulmonary veins. So it's the lungs that are, that are so when, if we back up the left side of the heart, if you follow it back, we end up in the lungs. So now the lungs are gonna have fluid, not the feet. So if you put a stethoscope, you might hear like the top part of the lungs. It sounds like kind of okay, but then you start going down towards the bottom part of the lungs and you hear fluid in there, right? Because when that fluid gets in your lungs, it's just gonna fall to the bottom, right? Now you're hearing fluid at the bottom. That could mean the left side of the heart got jacked up. So like when you understand the heart, you can figure out like where um, you know, what are the effects of things? Like they talk about DVTs, deep vein thrombosis. That means you've got um, a throm, like a clot, right? You've got a clot in your legs. You're like sitting on the airplane and you get a clot in your legs, in the vein. So if we follow it, okay, where is that clot going to go? So we're in the veins. Okay, where is it going next? Well, that clot is going to travel through my vein and my leg, go into my vena cava. Now where's the clot going to go? It's going to go into the right atrium. Is it going to clog it? No, it's too big. All right, so we got to get to a little vessel. It's not going to clog it. There's my clot. 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 And now the arteries are going to become little capillaries, pulmonary capillaries. So my clot is going to get stuck in the lungs. That's the smallest place, right? And so, anyway, that's not, this is on your test. So this is like the main question on your test. The flow of blood. I don't really care where you start and where you end. I just want you to have an idea of where things go. If you're going to um, continue with anatomy and physiology, um, you're, you're most definitely going to have this again, right? I had a choice for today and Monday. 
what chapters to kind of get. You know, in biology, we have a certain order that we have to go to, but then after photosynthesis and plants, it's kind of our choice, right? So I chose this stuff because um, this is probably the most important chapter out of out of all of anatomy and physiology, probably cardiovascular. It's probably the most important. So um, I just wanted you to have an idea about the heart and, and the blood flow through the heart. And um, so I'm going to ask you that question. Um, I'd like you to know which of these, so all these vessels are in black, right? I wrote them in black, but which one, of, which of these vessels, which of these things, carry oxygenated blood and which of them carry deoxygenated blood there's two ways you could approach this the first way is to try to memorize everything that carries oxygenated or and deoxygenated there is no need to do that i have actually written the answer up here right so what's carrying oxygenated blood well where does where in your body does blood get oxygen from the lungs so everything after that, so I just find the lungs. Well, here's the lungs. So there we go. Oxygenated, oxygenated, keep going, all the way until I get to the cells. So from all this is oxygenated. And then, see, so if you, I mean, if you understand it, you don't have to like think about, okay, which ones are oxygenated again? Or which, one, which ones are deoxygenated? Everything after the tissues. It's going to be deoxygenated all the way until we get to the lungs. So, again, it's not, I use the words oxygenated and deoxygenated. There is still oxygenated, there's still oxygen in your deoxygenated blood. It's just a very, it's a small percentage. <clears throat> so, do you ever think about like, CPR, not CPR now, because now we can't like French kiss each other. So we're just doing compressions. But you know, back when I started CPR, we did breaths, which is a horrible idea for me. I'd probably rather let people die. But whatever, we used to give breaths. Um, but then you're thinking, okay, well, when you're breathing out into somebody else's mouth, that's carbon dioxide, right? I mean, how how is that giving them oxygen? You're pushing, you're, you're breathing oxygen into their lungs? Yeah, there is still a little bit of oxygen in your, in, in all of that. It's just not as much, you know. So in fact, now they just said, forget it. You got enough oxygen in your body for like 10 minutes or whatever. Just push the heart and push that stuff. And so what are you doing when you're giving CPR? You're pushing on the, on the ventricles. I mean, you're literally pushing their heart. Just, you're, you're cracking all this, this all breaks. It's like breaking a, like if you ever like skinned a chicken and you like broke the bones and you heard them all break, that's what it is, it sounds like. All right, off topic. So, test. This question, know which one's oxygenated, know which one is deoxygenated. Um, I don't know that I'm gonna ask. I don't know exactly the, what kind of other questions I can ask about this because I I don't want to like pile a bunch of information on here. Um, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to stop this lecture, post it, but I'm going to keep going. So as soon as I stop recording, I'm going to hit record again and talk about some things that I might ask for the test on Friday. So let me just stop recording this.